North Korea's state broadcaster has released footage of leader Kim Jong-un overseeing live-fire military drills. The video showed Kim watching the drills involving what is called su what are called super large rocket launchers. State media said the drills were aimed at testing the country's war capability. This comes after South Korea and Japan condemned North Korea for firing multiple short-range ballistic missiles yesterday. Hong Kong lawmakers have resumed their debate on a proposed national security law. The law will expand the government's power to suppress dissent in the country. Hong Kong leader John Lee has urged legislators to push the bill through at full speed. However, it is unclear when the legislature will pass the law. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with the Philippines' Foreign Secretary Enrique Manalo in Manila this morning. The U.S. and the Philippines aim to boost their bilateral relation during Blinken's visit. This comes as the Philippines faces renewed threats from China over a disputed region in the South China Sea. The White House has said that Israel will send a delegation to Washington. This is to discuss its planned offensive in Rafah. The Biden administration has been insisting that an all-out offensive in Rafah will be catastrophic for Palestinians. With the meeting, the U.S. seeks to persuade Israel to not go ahead with an attack on Rafah and allow the entry of more aid into the region. European Union foreign ministers agreed in principle to impose sanctions to target Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank. This is the first time that the EU's 27 member countries have agreed to sanction violent Israeli settlers. They have also agreed to add further sanctions against Hamas. At the same meeting, the ministers also agreed to impose sanctions on people and organizations responsible for the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Former U.S. President Barack Obama was seen outside the residence of U.K. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak yesterday. Obama paid a courtesy visit to Sunak at No. 10 Downing Street during a trip to London. The leaders held an hour-long talk where they discussed a range of subjects, including artificial intelligence. Meanwhile, Sunak has said that he expects to begin deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda in the spring. The British government plans to do so by paying asylum seekers £3,000 each. This is to voluntarily move to Rwanda under a new plan. The new agreement is separate from the government's stalled Rwanda bill. Last year, the British Supreme Court ruled that the Rwanda bill is unlawful. A UN fact-finding mission has found that the death of Masa Amini in the custody of Iran's morality police was unlawful. It added that the death of the 22-year-old Amini was caused due to violence. In September 2022, Amini died after being arrested by Iran's morality police. This was after she had allegedly flouted Iran's dress code. Argentinian police clashed with demonstrators on the streets of Buenos Aires yesterday. They were protesting against Pre President Javier Millet's cuts on social spending. The police blocked roads and sprayed tear gas to control the crowd. Libertarian Millet has implemented austerity measures including cuts to state spending and trimming subsidies. This is his attempt to control the country's sky-high inflation. In Gambia, hundreds marched to the streets of the capital city of Banjul. They were marching in support of a bill that would repeal a ban on female genital mutilation. The mostly male crowd, including some women though, were seen carrying banners and sloganeering. In 2015, Gambia imposed steep fines and jail sentences against those who carried out female circumcision. However, earlier this month, lawmakers presented a bill to, uh, a bill to repeal the ban. They argued that the ban violated citizens' rights to practice their culture and religion. At least 10 bodies, uh, dead bodies have been found in an affluent suburb of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. Reports say gang members attacked a bank, a petrol station and homes in the area. This comes amid an escalation in gang violence and a political impasse in Haiti.
gunmen in Nigeria have kidnapped at least 87 people in a new attack. The attack took place in the Kajuru area of Kaduna State. The kidnapped people include women and children. This comes after 287 children and staff were abducted from a school earlier this month. 13 miners have been trapped after a rockfall in a gold mine in Russia's Amur region. The accident occurred at the Pioneer Mine, which is one of the largest gold mines in Russia. Officials say communications are being restored and the clearing of the slope is being carried out. In climate news, about 700 people were stranded in northern Australia due to a tropical cyclone. The Australian Defence Forces tried to evacuate residents from the uh, Borolula town. However, attempts to land aircraft were hampered by wild weather. Uh, the severe cyclone has brought heavy rainfall to the area. Schools in South Sudan have been closed ahead of an extreme heat wave. Temperatures will likely soar to 45 degrees Celsius for the next two weeks. The country's health and education ministries have advised parents to keep their children indoors. South Sudan is vulnerable to extreme weather conditions like heat waves, droughts and floods. Torrential rains have triggered mudslides in the south Peruvian town of Alca. The mudslides have washed away several roads and destroyed around 75 houses in the region. Officials say rescue teams have been mobilized to assist people affected by the disaster. Deforestation in Brazil's Amazon in January and February was at its lowest level since 2018. This is according to a report by a Brazil-based non-governmental organization called Amazon. The report says that 196 square kilometers of the forest were clear cleared in the first two months of 2024. This is 63% less than in the same period in 2023. The Brazilian government aims to achieve zero deforestation by 2030. The spring season has nearly disappeared from northwest India. This is according to a US-based non-governmental organization called Climate Central. The report says that most states in the region have witnessed an abrupt rise in temperatures between January and February. In an ideal climate scenario, such warming is only seen from the month of March. Researchers say that weather conditions are changing due to rising levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Meanwhile, Indian activist Sonam Wangchuk's climate fast has entered its 14th day today. He is observing a 21-day fast to draw attention to the climate crisis in the Union Territory of Ladakh. Wangchuk wants the Indian government to protect Ladakh's ecosystem and its tribal indigenous culture. His protest has gained the support of thousands of people across the country. Climate activists protested outside the headquarters of British broadcaster GB News in London. The protest was organized by the UK-based climate movement called Extinction Rebellion. Activists accused the news channel of spreading climate lies and misinformation. They also called the channel a puppet TV station for the fossil fuel industry. On to business and tech news. Japan's central bank has raised interest rates for the first time in 17 years. The Bank of Japan raised the interest rate from minus 0.1% to the range of 0 to 0.1%. Since 2016, the Bank of Japan kept its interest rate negative. This was due to a decade-long economic downturn in the country. This resulted in a significant decline in consumer spending and high debt. Chinese real estate firm Evergrande's founder, Hui Kayan, has been banned from the stock market for life. Hui Kayan has also been fined over $6.5 million. He's accused of inflating the financial results of Evergrande's flagship firm, Hengda Real Estate. This comes after the market regulator started an investigation against Hengda and its founder last year. This penalty is the latest challenge for the indebted firm, which has been ordered to liquidate. 
China's solar cell maker Longi Green Technology says that it will lay off 5% of its total workforce. The firm has said that job cuts will help it face the competitive market environment. This comes after a report earlier that said Longi is sacking nearly one-third of its workers. The firm has rejected that report. The US stock exchange Nasdaq was hit by a technical glitch yesterday. The problem led to investors facing difficulties in placing stock orders for over two hours. The stock exchange later said that it had resolved the issues and all systems were operating normally. Japan's Nippon Steel has said that it will move its US headquarters to the city of Pittsburgh. That is if the firm's acquisition deal with the American steel producer US Steel goes through. Nippon Steel has proposed taking over U.S. Steel for $15 billion. However, the deal has faced criticism from U.S. lawmakers, including President Joe Biden. They are concerned that the proposed merger would lead to job cuts in the U.S. U.S. electric vehicle maker Fisker is pausing production for six weeks. This comes as the firm undergoes a severe cash crunch. The firm said that it, is, it has missed an $8.4 million interest payment on debt. Fisker added that it is planning to raise up to $150 million by selling bonds. Chip maker NVIDIA kicked off its annual developer conference yesterday. At the event, the firm's CEO, Jensen Huang, unveiled the company's latest artificial intelligence processor called the Blackwell B200. As per the firm, the processor is 30 times faster than its, older, uh, than its predecessor, the B100. The product is expected to be critical for NVIDIA to maintain its dominance in the AI chip market. Meanwhile, NVIDIA has also announced new partnerships with Chinese automakers. This includes a partnership with the car makers BYD, Xpeng and Gak Ion. The firm says that the collaborations with Chinese car makers will help boost self-driving car technologies. BYD will integrate NVIDIA's next-gen artificial intelligence chips called Drive Thor. The chip is expected to help BYD cars enhance their self-driving capabilities. Apple has said that it is complying with the European Union's new Digital Markets Act, or DMA. The DMA came into effect earlier this month. It requires Apple to allow competition in the iPhone's closed ecosystem. In a hearing yesterday, the iPhone maker said that it has redesigned its systems to comply with the DMA. This includes allowing app developers to distribute apps directly to iPhone users in the EU. Earlier, developers had to, had to use the App Store to distribute their apps on an iPhone. An Australian digital regulator has sent legal notices to several social media platforms. Notices have been sent to platforms including YouTube, X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, Telegram and Reddit, among others. The regulator is demanding details about the social media firm's efforts to combat extremist content. Moving to sports, in cricket, Bangladesh beat Sri Lanka on the third and final ODI uh, by four wickets yesterday. They chased down the modest target of 236 set by Sri Lanka in just 40 overs. Uh, concussion substitute Tanzid Hassan struck a solid 84 of 81 balls for Bangladesh. With the win, Bangladesh have clinched the three-match ODI series 2-1. Afghanistan beat Ireland on the third T uh, T20 international match by 57 runs. The Afghans posted 155 for seven in their innings, where Ibrahim Zadran scored an unbeaten 72. Ireland struggled in their run chase right from the start. They slumped to 15 for three after 2.4 overs and were eventually bundled out for just 98 runs. The captain of the IPL franchise, Lucknow Supergiants, KL Rahul, will be back in action for his team when the tournament starts. He has received a fitness clearance from the National Cricket Academy. However, he has been advised against wicket-keeping for the first few games. KL Rahul had suffered a strain in his quadriceps during the first test against England. In football, Lionel Messi has been sidelined for Argentina 
Argentina's friendlies because of a hamstring injury. This was announced by the Argentine Football Association yesterday. Last week, he got injured while playing for his club into Miami in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Messi will miss Argentina's match against El Salvador on Friday and a friendly against Costa Rica later on. Spanish football club Real Madrid has filed a complaint against the referee who was in charge of their game at Osasuna on Saturday. Real Madrid say the referee ignored racist slurs hurled at Vinicius Jr. in his match report. Real Madrid won the game 4-2, where Vinicius scored two goals. The South American Football Confederation, or CONMEBOL, reopened its football museum in Paraguay yesterday. The museum is dedicated to the region's football history. The, new, the museum features statues of football legends such as Diego Maradona, Pele and Lionel Messi. The museum was originally set up in 2009, but it was closed for renovation recently. In tennis, India's Sumit Nagal is just one step away from qualifying for the Miami Open. Nagal defeated Canadian Gabriel Diallo 7-6-6-2 yesterday in the first qualifier match. He is likely to reach a new career-high ranking of world number 92 after this win. Nagal needs to win his final uh, qualifier against Coleman Wong to enter the main draw. After a prolonged doping row, Simona Halep will make a comeback at the Miami Open. She will face Paula Bardosa of Spain in her opening match. Halep's four-year ban was reduced to nine months after she won an appeal. She enters as a wild card at the Miami Open that starts this Sunday. Women's world number one Igor Shiontek is gunning for a sunshine double at the Miami Open. A sunshine double is when a player wins the Indian Wells and the Miami Open in the same season. These two tournaments are held back to back. Last year, Shiontek missed her Miami Open title defense due to an injury. Indian javelin ace Neeraj Chopra voiced concerns about career struggles. His rival Arshad Nadeem from Pakistan continues to face despite his success. Arshad, who is a Commonwealth uh, champion, has not been able to obtain a new international standard javelin. Neeraj Chopra suggested that Pakistan's government should support him uh, in obtaining the required gear. In entertainment news, Kate Middleton has reportedly been spotted visiting a farm shop outside London. A purported video of her outing showed the princess smiling with her husband, Prince William. This was one of Middleton's rare appearances after her abdominal surgery in January. Recently, she sparked a controversy after sharing an edited photo of herself with her children on Kensington Palace's social media handle. She later apologized for her experiment with editing. Meanwhile, American reality TV star Kim Kardashian faced criticism for allegedly spreading rumors about Kate Middleton. Kardashian recently posted a series of pictures on Instagram. The caption of her post read, and I quote, On my way to go find Kate. This referred to the ongoing absence of Middleton from public appearances. Several social media users slammed Kardashian's caption and called it distasteful and irresponsible. Over 450 Jewish stars and Hollywood professionals have denounced director Jonathan Glazer's speech at the Oscars. In an open letter, they claimed Glazer's remarks on the Oscars stage fueled anti-Jewish hatred. Glazer stirred a massive controversy last week while, he, while receiving the Academy Award for Best International Feature. In his acceptance speech, he connected his Holocaust film The Zone of Interest with the crisis in Gaza. Oprah Winfrey has addressed the decades-long criticism of her weight in her latest TV special. Winfrey said that she was ridiculed on talk shows and magazines for 25 years while she was struggling with obesity. The American TV host has also spoken about the myths surrounding obesity and its med medication. American singer R. Kelly has appealed uh, to overturn a 30-year racketeering sentence against him. In his appeal, he said that the jurors prejudged his guilt and he was denied a fair trial. R. Kelly was found guilty of racketeering and trafficking following a high-profile trial in 2021. 
Last year, he was sentenced to an additional year in jail on charges related to distributing indecent images of children and child enticement. Ariana Grande's latest song, We Can't Be Friends, has debuted at number one on Billboard Global Charts. This is her fourth song to soar to the number one spot on the Billboard Global 200 list. The song is the second single from Grande's seventh studio album, Eternal Sunshine. Earlier, her lead single, Yes And, topped the list in January. The Star Wars series The Acolyte has revealed its premiere date on Disney+. The show will debut on the streaming service on the 4th of June. The series is a mystery thriller that will show the final days of the High Republic era of the Star Wars universe. Popular K-drama actor Lee byung soo and internet star Lee Yoon jin are headed for a divorce. The couple has decided to end their marriage after 14 years. Speculation about their divorce started in December 2023. This was after Yoo jin posted some cryptic messages on Instagram. The duo also stopped following each other on social media on the so social media platform soon after. Indian actor Arundhati Nair met with a road accident in the state of Kerala. The actor was travelling with her brother when the incident took place. According to her family statement, Nair has suffered severe head injuries. She has been kept on a ventilator and is fighting for her life. British-American screenwriter David Seidler has died at the age of 86. He passed away while fly fishing during his vacation in New Zealand. Seidler was best known for penning the Oscar-winning film The King's Speech. His other renowned projects included animated children's musicals The King and I and Quest for Camelot.